Okay. <laughs> now, now we're cooking with, I don't even know what the phrase is. Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my little corner of the interwebs. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, I'm barefaced and beautiful because I want to do another chatty get ready with me talking about my 2024 goals. I know every time I say I'm going to do a chatty get ready with me, it turns out to be a chatty eyeshadow look, but I'm trying to get like a full face <laughs> and practice makes progress. So, that's essentially what we are going to do today. Now, I have been wanting to do this video on my 2024 goals for a little bit now because I think it's really important to have goals for the year, say them out loud, put pen to paper, and just really kind of think through that. So this process is helping me kind of like reassess what I wrote down, think through it, and then decide if it makes sense, but also in some ways hold me accountable to what I'm going to say. Now, before we dive in, I want to say a couple of things. <laughs> One huge thank you and welcome to all the people that have joined me in the past month like I checked my analytics and there's almost 300 new people on this channel in the last 30 days and that's wild to me so I just want to thank you guys so much for the support I've been doing my best the last two to three weeks to really try to catch up on content keep things going now that I'm not traveling as much and I am happy that so many of you guys found my channel and have been liking the content so Please feel free to comment below if you have any of the suggestions, things that you want me to do, all that fun jazz. And the other thing I want to say is if this is your first time watching me, welcome. You know, I'm Jamila and on my little corner of the interwebs here, I really try to focus on how to get the high end, the luxury, the indie makeup at the best prices. I don't believe in paying full price for makeup, skincare, any beauty products really. So I try to share all of my tips and tricks for getting into this space without breaking the bank because it's an expensive hobby and I think everyone can partake and enjoy without going broke. <laughs> so if that sounds like something you are interested in, I'd absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay, now that I've done my little wiggle, let's go ahead and dive into the video. I'm gonna be using the Unveiled palette from Sydney Grace. This was actually one that they sent to me in PR, and there's a paper here somewhere with the details on this. I should find it, hold on. Okay, so it actually turns out this is a collab with Kendra Mathais. This is her. Um, who I believe is a bridal makeup artist, or just a makeup artist that specializes in bridal makeup. And, the palette is available now. It is $52. Um, yeah, it launched on the 15th and today is not the 15th. So it's available now for $52. And Sydney Grace did send me it in the deep version. As you know, they always do a light and a deep version for their palettes. And this is the deep one. I do have some artificial lights on. So I do have some artificial like ring lights kind of thing in front of me as well as my bedroom light is on. I'm playing around with the lighting in my room. Um, so give me your feedback, you guys. Like, let me know like how you guys feel about the lighting because when it comes to filming, especially in the winter time when there is no natural sunlight, it gets really hot. So let me know how my artificial lighting situation is working. All right, I don't know what else I'm putting on my face. I don't know what look I'm going for. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. So like I said, today's video, I'm gonna share with you all my um, goals for 2024. Now, when I was writing down my goals, one of the things that I tried to do was to take a smart goals approach. Um, and that is because, you know, it's something that you learn, well, I learned in my profession in sort of like the, I, I don't, I think it was in the research space, I don't know. But you know, in my like career and my schooling or whatever, we're taught about SMART goals, and essentially I'll give you guys the acronym. So SMART goals are a way of documenting goals and they have to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. So, you know, a lot of times uh, people will have very grandiose goals. Like, I'll give you a, a very basic example. I want to lose weight. Sure, that is technically a goal. A goal is you want to lose weight, but there's no specificity in that. A SMART goal would be saying, I want to lose 20 pounds within the next year. You know, it's time bound because you have a year as your deadline. It's specific because you've listed the amount of pounds that you want to lose. It's, re um, well, it, depending on who you are, it will be realistic and attainable or whatever. And it's measurable, right? Because you can measure your initial weight and then the final weight to see if you actually met your goal. So that's what a SMART goal is essentially. And I 
wanted to make sure that my goals was smart because it's hard to know if you've been successful if you're not actually tracking and measuring it, right? So that was one thing that I went in one sort of mindset. I went into school planning for 2024. The other thing that I thought about um, and that I did before this was that I actually watched other goals videos. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Let me know if you guys do that as well. But I found it quite helpful to watch other folks talk about their 2024 goals because I felt like it gave me ideas. I felt like it helped me, you know, find either points of conversion or, you know, similarities in what I was trying to do with what other people were trying to do. And hearing the way in which they talk about their goals and the way in which they articulated things was really helpful for me kind of like figuring out, you know what, that's actually a good goal, but here's how I would tweak it for myself. Here's how I would tweak it for my lifestyle. So, um, I will say I borrowed and begged and stole, just kidding. No, I really did borrow a lot from other creators who have 2024 videos. Um, so if you are still thinking about what your 2024 goals are, I definitely think you should take a look at some other folks on the interwebs and see what they're saying, see what they're doing. Um, and it doesn't have to be makeup goals. It doesn't have to be beauty goals. It can just be goals in general. Cause I definitely looked at like a wide variety of creators, um, that had different goals for their lifestyle and versus like channel goals and whatnot. So, and it's never too late, you know, like, I feel like there is this expectation that you're supposed to be ready to hit the ground running come January one. And that's not true. Like you don't have to be prepared to jump and dive headfirst into your goals. January 1. Like you can start February, you can start end of January, and quite frankly, when you're a lot of times goals involve forming new habits, new practices or changing old habits, and that's hard. It's not easy to just completely like change your lifestyle overnight. So, in setting goals, you know, you have to have some level of understanding that you know what? I might fail, I might fall, I might stumble, and I'm just going to pick myself up. Pick yourself up but try again, try again, <laughs> that, I mean, that y'all know where I'm going with that, but yeah, essentially, I know it's dust yourself off and try again, who said, if at first you don't succeed, you can dust it off and try again, dust yourself off and try again, try again, I had to remember the actual words, because it was, it was gonna bother me, but it, yeah, essentially, so it, it takes a little bit, anyways, so that was a little bit of a spiel to tell you guys how I got to where I am, and my approach to setting goals. So let's actually get into the specific goals. And I will say for the most part, these are set in stone, but there's always room for improvement, for wiggling, for moving things around. So as life changes, <laughs> you have to like adjust accordingly. So I wanna actually start off with my YouTube slash content creation goals, because I think that those were a lot easier for me to articulate and for me to get out on paper. Um, and kind of clear cut. So the first goal that I have for 2024 is I would like to hit 5,000 subscribers. And I chose 5,000 specifically because I would say that in the past or since I've hit a thousand subscribers, it has been kind of steady growth in terms of about a thousand subscribers per year which is great and I am extremely grateful for every single person who decides that after watching me for however many minutes, they enjoy my vibe, my personality, my style, my content enough to hit subscribe. Um, but as with everything in content creation, the goal is growth, right? The goal is not to be stagnant. So, and I think it is important to have a number in your mind when you are creating content. It doesn't mean anything, um, but it, I do think it is good to work towards a specific number. So right now I am at 40, not 47, uh, yeah, 4,700 subscribers. That's, that's where I'm at right now. So in order for me to get to the five, no, it's not. <laughs> it's 3,700 subscribers, right. So in order for me to get to 5K, I would have to get over a thousand subscribers this year. Um, and I think it's doable. I think it's doable. Now, what I know I need to do in order to hit that is there's gonna be a lot that I have to take into account in terms of how I produce content, you know? Am I reaching 
as much people as I can with my content. Is the quality of my content okay? You know, that's why I asked you guys about how does my lighting sound? How, how does my lighting sound? How does my lighting look? How does my sound sound? You know, all of those things I think are really, really important because people don't stick around to watch videos where either they don't like the creator, the vibe or whatever, or the con or the um the quality. So if my quality sucks, especially considering that I do beauty content, people are not gonna like stick around. They're gonna click off, which is fair. Like nobody wants to watch a video where they can barely hear the person talking or the audio is so messed up that it's like scraggly and scratchy in the ears. Um, no one's gonna stick around to listen to that. Or if they can't see anything, like I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> my eyes are not the best. I've had LASIK and they're still not the best. And I have zero intentions and zero interest in sitting around trying to figure out, trying to scrunch up and see what some creator is doing. So quality is really important. Um, and also content, you know, I did a video a couple of weeks back that I will try to remember to link talking about why I needed to leave or why I wanted to leave the indie beauty community. And obviously it was a little bit of an overstatement <laughs> because I'm working with an indie brand um, right now and I love indie eyeshadow palettes um, but I'm also like I would like to explore I'd like to explore other categories of makeup you know I also feel like a lot of other people overwhelmed with my eyeshadow collection so in terms of my collection overall I, I don't want to continuously be bringing in and reviewing eyeshadow into my collection like I'm not a review channel and I've never wanted to be a review channel. So coming to terms with the fact that my last three years have been primarily reviews and eyeshadow reviews at that, I think it has kind of like boxed me out or boxed me in, I should say, into this very specific niche that I don't necessarily want to be in. I don't want to be in the indie eyeshadow niche. That's not that's not where I, I want to see myself sit and that's also not where I think I will see myself grow like I don't think the indie community I think the indie community is small small but mighty but I also the more the more I'm, I'm in it the more I recognize that there are just people who are not interested in indie makeup and people who are interested in indie makeup but they choose not to in, engage in this content because indie prices are going up it's really expensive it's hard to get products if you don't live within the US and for them they're looking for things that may be more mainstream easier to acquire and things that are just simply more evergreen and that will last a long time like I understand the frustration with like brands continuously releasing limited edition products that just go away after like six months so I think if I continue down the path of continuous eyeshadow reviews and continuously focusing on indie makeup, it's not going to get me to my 5,000 subscriber goal. I have to think about other things, other brands or specific brands that I want to focus on and how to incorporate them into my channel in an organic way that makes sense and that would reach a wider audience because that's how I will gain more subscribers. That was really long-winded and that we just on goal one, but <laughs> I, th I don't know, maybe it's helpful. Okay, goal two is upload three to four videos a week. I look at this goal and it's like, I feel so proud of myself from where I from where I am now because when I started my channel, my goal was one video a week, you guys. And that is because I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to do anything. I was really, really learning what it meant to create content. And it would take me days to edit a single video. It was a hot mess. And now I have gotten a lot better at some of the things that happen past the filming stage. But I don't think I don't think a lot of people realize that filming is the easiest part of creating content. Like literally turning on the camera and talking for an hour, half an hour, whatever it is, is the easiest part of creating content. It gets hard once you just have to edit, create your thumbnail, link everything. That's where a lot of the extra time comes in. So when I first started doing one video a week was all I all I could could accomplish well um, and that's the important thing too going back to what I said about quality as I was making these goals you know one thing I don't want to sacrifice is quality for quantity you know there are folks who upload daily there are people who upload six seven times a week 
And I think there are a couple of things that I notice about that is that one, either they're doing this full time and they actually have the ability to upload that often because, you know, this is their job or two, they're uploading constantly, but quite frankly, it's not the best quality videos. And if they slow down and maybe did two to three uploads versus six to seven, it might be better for them because you'd have two to three really good videos versus six to seven eh, subpar poor quality videos. So for me, I feel like I'm at the point where I can realistically accomplish three to four videos a week. And you know, part of that is I've kind of like figured out the method that works best for me. Now I'm saying that also with a big caveat in that it depends on what my travel schedule looks like. If you've been here for a minute uh, and you join me in December or November and you follow me on Instagram, you guys know from the last week of October through the end of last year, I was traveling every week, every single week. Some of it for work, some of it for personal stuff because I also enjoy travel on a personal level. And because of that, it really messed with my filming schedule. This is my second job, so uh, my time during the week is monopolized by me working the job that pays my bills, the job that keeps a roof over my head. So because of that, when it comes to filming, I primarily film on the weekends. If I get up early enough to film before work, I'll do that as well. Um, but for the most part, I film on the weekends, I edit after work. That's, that's what I do. So when I'm traveling, it just gets infinitely harder to be able to film and put content up. But on a regular, regular, smegular week where I'm not traveling like crazy, three to four videos is fine because I can film on either Saturday or Sunday, three videos back to back quite easily. And that's because, you know, one of the videos typically is me applying makeup, testing a new product. And then the other two videos tend to be more chatty videos that don't actually require me to change or anything like that. And from what I can tell, you guys don't care. Like, I know some people are like, <laughs> get bothered when a creator has on the same outfit in multiple videos. And I don't think you guys care, which is great because I, I don't got the time or the wardrobe to be doing that much. And quite frankly, I'm a very basic person. Like, I have the same t-shirt from Target in every single color for like every day of the week because it just simplifies things in my mind. And if I'm not going anywhere, if I'm just sitting at home, I promise you I'm wearing the same Target t-shirt, whether it be long sleeve or short sleeve, because I have it in long and short, just in a different color. So <laughs> I don't, I don't, no one's ever brought it up to me. I don't think anybody's ever really noticed or cared. Um, and to be quite frank, you know, some of those shirts I have in multiple colors, like I have like two or three of the same black shirt, whether it be the t-shirt or the long sleeve. I'm pretty sure I have two of the long sleeve and at least three of the short sleeve in black. That's just, that's just what it is. So like I said, three to four videos a week is what I think is realistic for me, given my lifestyle, uh, my other commitments, because I have a life outside of this. Um, I think I can do three to four videos well without jeopardizing the quality of the videos. Okay, and then that leads me to my next goal, which is one real or short poo week. Now, I, as much as I don't like short form content, I fully recognize that we live in a world where people do not have the desire or ability to spend time <laughs> on long form content all the time. So like, I want to do one short form video a week and I want to make sure that it is one where I'm building off of content that already exists. And I think I've kind of started doing that where I would try to like share swatches in like a reel or shorts content. Like one of the skills that I need to learn how to develop is how to make one piece of content work across multiple platforms and in multiple ways. Like if I'm filming a video, can, is there is there something I can clip from it that can be used as a reel or a short for Instagram? You know, how am I able to utilize my content in multiple different ways? And that's just a skill that I haven't developed yet. So it, it is my goal to really develop that skill so that I can put up more short form content. 
because I do find that I think a lot of people appreciate like the reels or the shorts of just swatches because sometimes that's all you need. You just want to see what it looks like swatched out and you don't need, want to have to watch a full 20 minute YouTube video to figure out like, is this going to swatch well on a deeper complexion? So that's one of the goals. So three to four videos a week, one shorts per week. Okay, let me do my eyeliner because I can't talk an eyeline and then I'll come back and talk about the rest of my goals. Okay, um, getting restored to any rest of my face. I'm gonna go in with my Yummy Skin Glow Serum from Danessa Myricks. I have been kind of really into like a nice hydrated look, mainly because it's winter, my skin is dry, and this one doesn't do too much. It's a lot lighter than the Chanel La Beige's Winter Glow Primer. Um, ooh, I don't think I noticed the smell before. Kind of perfumey. It's not bad. So, yeah. I don't mind it. Okay. So continuing on, we're still on my YouTube goals. The next goal that I have is that I want to incorporate new slash different content into my um, into my channel. I think this is my goal that is probably the least specific if we're talking about like smart goals. And that is because I haven't articulated what that new content is. And to be quite frank, I don't know what that is. So I'm gonna let you guys in on a little bit of background of my channel. When I started YouTube, and I was trying to figure out what name to pick for my channel. I specifically did not want anything that's, that said beauty, makeup, anything of that sort because I did not want to pigeon myself into a specific niche just yet. Even though I've heard and everyone has said like having a niche is really important, I didn't want to pigeon myself into a niche. And so I named my channel I Am Jamila because I wanted the content to be me. <laughs> like, I am the content, you know? Like, I wanted to be centered around me. And I also chose I am Jamila because my name is an Arabic word. So it literally translates into beautiful. So I wanted my, so my channel literally, name literally translates into I am beautiful, which I thought was beautiful, <laughs> which is why I chose it. But again, it does not picture me into being a beauty channel, which is exactly what I did not want to happen, you know? So for my foundation, we're going to keep it somewhat glowy. I'm going to go in with my LYS foundation. This is in the shade DN3. You guys know I'm trying to get better with how much foundation I use. I'm just going to pump that onto the back of my hand. You can see how runny this is. And I'm just going to swipe that across my face. So I don't have too much foundation on. It's so like I was saying, I very much wanted my channel to not be pigeonholed into a beauty channel, hence the name that I chose. So, as all of us are, so you know, we're all complex individuals with multiple interests, multiple things going on in our life, and beauty is just one of the things that I'm interested in, one of the things that I enjoy doing. I'm someone who likes hiking, I love to travel, which I think most of you guys already know. Like there are just so many other parts of my life that I enjoy that I don't share with you guys on this channel. And you know, not everything is for social media, I'll fully admit that. Like you gotta be able to keep some things for yourself. <laughs> so I have zero intentions of coming on here and sharing every single aspect of my life with you guys because it's inappropriate as hell. Um, <laughs> And that's just what it is. You know, there are some creators who that's what they choose to do. They want to be as open and honest and, and as bare as you can be. But that's not me. I'm not going to be on Beyonce's good internet doing all that for several reasons. And I think one of them being is that not everybody that watches you cares or has your best interest at heart. Most people probably sure, you know, the vast majority of the world is filled with beautiful human beings who actually give a damn and are not trying to cause harm to other human beings. But there are some assholes out there. Let's not get it twisted. There's also a lot of weird, weird people in this world. So don't, my recommendation is don't give everything of yourself to a bunch of strangers on the internet. So that's not exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, but, you know, with me making the statement and the decision to kind of shift away from reviews, especially like eyeshadow content and whatever, I have to fill the space with something, you know what I mean? I have to be able to incorporate other forms of content that will keep you all here, that will keep people interested in coming back. And whether that be chatty get ready with me or more of that or like more shop my stash videos, like I'm not saying I have to recreate the wheel and come up with an entirely new content concept, but 
I do need to think of other ways I can incorporate, you know, different parts of my life, different parts of who I am as a person into this channel, and also content that I think all of us are craving. Because I have heard from you all loud and clear that you are just kind of tired of the new releases, kind of tired of people constantly trying to sell you something. And that's not me. I'm not a salesperson. I'm really, really bad at it. <laughs> like, really bad at it. It is not my ministry, and I have zero interest in telling you guys that you need to buy this thing in order to get this result, because chances are you already have something that's gonna give you the result that you're looking for, and you don't need to go out and buy this specific thing. So like, I know that's never something that, I, that that's never a position I wanted to be in because I'm really bad at it and I just don't want to be a salesperson. So this is probably where you guys can actually be really helpful. And I'm using my Tom Ford concealer, which is almost done. I got this much left. Um, and I know I applied it very, very haphazardly. That's just kind of what I, I do with this. Probably not the best application method, definitely not the best application method, but it works, so just, just let it go. Um, and so yeah, so you know, this is where I would love any feedback that you guys have on like different types of content that you guys would like to see. Um, bear in mind that as I am exploring new types of content or as this channel progresses, you might see me try something and then decide I don't wanna do it and then let it go. So I think it will be a little bit of trial and error as I figure out, you know, what new content do I want to incorporate it incorporate how do i want to incorporate it you know like one thing i one thing i thought about a while back was can i do travel content you know i love 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 to travel that's one of my favorite things to do and like i love it more than i love makeup um but you know travel content is hard because at least for me because when I travel, I really try to be in the moment and enjoy everything. Like sure, I will take pictures to like remember where I was, what I was doing, but creating travel content requires vlogging, taking videos, you know? Depending on who you're with, they may or may not want to be in the video. You have to bring your own equipment, set up your tripod, especially if you're solo traveling. Like there's just a lot of thought that goes into it that takes away from the being in the moment and just simply enjoying the experience. Like, I'm sure if I started doing it, it would get easier over time and I would be able to do both, but it's not something that I am fully ready to commit to just yet, you know? And I also wanna make sure that whatever I'm bringing into this channel kind of feels organic and not too tangential, you know what I mean? Because while I think travel content is great, it might just be like a leap too far from like beauty to like, okay, now we're doing travel. So. It might be easier for me to, to think more about like shopping vlogs and I don't even shop like that so I don't know why I said that and I'm trying to be on a low buy so I take that back. Um, <laughs> but like maybe window shopping, you know, like window shopping because I do like going to stores and just walking around and just like seeing what they got in store. So that type of, you know, vlogging, uh, more lifestyle content. Like I'm not a big fashion girly. I wish I could be, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, but yeah, more lifestyle, I think is a slightly more organic pivot than travel, if that makes sense. So yeah, leave it in, your, in the comments if you have any recommendations on different types of content you can see or would like to see me incorporate. And they can be beauty or non-beauty related because you know, I'm still looking for ideas on what type of beauty content you guys are interested in that has nothing to do with new reviews or new releases or you know having to purchase a ton of products because that's not in my ministry this that's not in my bingo card this year spending a ton of money on makeup is definitely not a part of my to-do list for this year so yeah and then the last thing i have as a goal and this one is definitely a little bit more measurable. And as you can see, th these do need a little bit of workshopping. Um, but my last goal is I wanna actually kick off my Do We Still Love Her series. Now this is a, a Kara's version of like shopping her stash, where she would pull out a eyeshadow palette or basically any beauty product that she's had in her collection and try it again to see if she still loves it. Um, 
And I thought that it was a great idea because we have so much makeup in our collections, we're not going back to them. And, you know, our makeup preferences, our opinions, all of those things change all the time. So I think it's really important for us to revisit what we have and see, okay, am I still feeling the same way about this? And I'm using my Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder to set where I had that concealer. This is in the shade yellow and I really, really like this. This is one of my favorite powders. I've been through probably about two of these already. So that is a series I wanna kick off. Let me know if you guys are interested in that, if that sounds like something you would want to watch because I think it's a cool idea, but if you guys don't wanna watch it, I don't wanna waste my time, you know? And then I'm going in with my Sephora Micro Smooth Powder, which is almost done, almost. And I'm just gonna set the rest of my face. Now this is technically a powder foundation to my understanding. So it does um, add a little bit of color, which I think is great because it definitely pulls everything together, the foundation, the concealer, really, really nicely. And what I, and I'm saying all of this because like, <laughs> but like Sephora, I think they're discontinuing this because when you go on the website, they got like two shades. Now I've seen a ton of it in stores, but I am not seeing this powder online, which is making me very, very concerned because not only do they only have like two shades, but it's on discount. This is a $20 powder, but it's on discount for I believe $14. So I'm not, I'm not sure what's happening. And I am slightly worried because it's actually a very, very nice powder. So hopefully they're not discontinuing it because that would make me very sad. Sorry, I just adjusted the height a little bit. Um, again, playing around with these settings. So I hope this isn't too bad. So those are my YouTube cr slash content creation goals. Um, now, what I am gonna do now is tell you guys about some of my personal goals, because like I said, I want to incorporate more lifestyle, more of myself into my content going forward. So it's not just all beauty related. So this is my attempt to start doing that. <laughs> and we're gonna go into the LYS bronzer. This is in the shade Strength. And I hit pan on this, you guys, pan. So I'm trying to empty it up, you know, like I'm really trying to work through my products this year because we can't be buying new things when we got things just sitting there. Okay, so. The first goal that I have is actually, I, I know it's one that is extremely important and probably the main goal for this year, but it needs to be workshopped significantly. It's definitely not a smart goal. So it needs to be workshopped. So, and it probably needs to be workshopped into a bunch of smaller goals. But essentially, I want to have more structure with my finances. And the way I phrased it is that I want to improve my financial discipline. I don't know if that makes sense. It doesn't when I say it out loud and it didn't when I wrote it down. But <laughs> let me explain to you guys what I mean, you know? So as an individual, I have been, I've always been very thoughtful or mindful about my spending. Like I'm not somebody that wants to be in debt. I'm not somebody that sits in debt. So I'm never like overspending to the point where I'm concerned that I'm gonna pay my rent, gonna pay my bills and end up on the street. So I am always very, very careful about making sure that all of the things that need to be taken care of are taken care of. But over the last, I would say like three to five years, I feel like I've become a little bit sloppy with my finances. And that is for a couple of reasons. So first, I think COVID really had an impact because COVID changed my financial landscape significantly in that I wasn't commuting to work anymore. I wasn't buying a lot of the things that I think are associated with like travel for work or commuting to work. So I didn't have any work clothes that I was buying and no work shoes. Um, gas, all of those things. So I feel like I had a little bit more play money to, to sit, if you want to call it that. Now, in addition to like the work aspect of not traveling when it comes of uh, the work aspect of COVID, there was also the social aspect of COVID. Now, I'm a very social person. I'm an extrovert like through and through. But with COVID, I was not going out, you know, like I wasn't going out to dinner, going out to brunches and whatnot. So again, extra money. And with that, and with COVID lasting as long as it did, the, my lifestyle shifted. And you know, it takes about three weeks for a new habit to form, and COVID was obviously like two years. So with, you know, COVID, I adopted this kind of lifestyle of like, oh, I have all of this extra money now because I don't have these expenses of like socializing or like commuting or whatnot for work because now I work from home. And with that, what I found myself doing was that I put a lot of that money into like makeup, into beauty products, which, worked at the time um because i also wasn't traveling as well so like you know what else was i spending my money on now granted i should have been putting it into savings putting more into savings but 
that was then and now we're in 2024 covid was in 2020 so the excuse of oh it was covid is not gonna work no more we we've been there done that covid is done yes covid had an impact yes it's an impact that will be felt for years but it can't be an excuse or continue to be an excuse so look, now that we are kind of like past the covid phase one i'm traveling again which is not a cheap hobby it's an expensive one um I'm also going out more, friends, family, dinner, brunches, all of those things. Again, that is an expense that I hadn't been doing for some time, so now it's brought back into my life. Um, so I have these additional expenses now, and I have not shifted my spending accordingly. So with that, it's like I'm spending more than I'm comfortable with at this point. And a lot of that is, you know, me spending on still spending more on like makeup and beauty products that I'm very, that I'm comfortable with. Now I'm not saying that I don't want to spend on beauty and makeup because like I said, part of the, part of like my shift in mindset is recognizing that this is a job and that I have expenses for this job. But I also know that now that my lifestyle has shifted, the amount of money I was putting into beauty, I can't put into beauty anymore because it just doesn't make any sense because in order to do the other things that I find value in and that bring me joy, like travel, like hanging out with friends and family, the money has to come from somewhere and it's not gonna fall from the sky. It's not gonna grow on a tree. It has to be shifted somewhere. And another thing too is that expenses have gone up. <laughs> like, you know, when I started my channel in 2020, I was with my partner at the time and we had, shared expenses so rent was half of what it was like all of those things contributed to me having extra money now i live on my own um and so now all of the expenses are on me which is totally fine but it's like the, the there's the expense of i having to pay for everything and the all the the added expense of everything has just gotten more expensive like i buy groceries for one and i'm like why is it, i'm just feeding me why is it this expensive? There's no reason why feeding a single human being should cost this much. So, you know, as the economy shifts, my mindset on like spending and what I'm putting money into and how much money I'm putting into has completely shifted. You know, like I, being a single individual and being somebody that doesn't have any kids, there's, there's a certain like benefit that I have and being someone that has worked really hard to be where I'm at, I have the benefit of, or have had the benefit of, when I want something, I can buy it. And I can comfortably swipe my card without worrying about if this is going to like be my financial ruin. But when you get to that place where you're like just swipey swiping, and you're not really thinking about it, it's not good because when you really step back and take and analyze like, whoa, I spent that much on food or eating out or DoorDash or, you know, that much on makeup. Like there was a month I spent like a thousand dollars on makeup. That is just stupid. Like there's no other way to describe it, but stupid. So like, you know, and a lot of times it's because you you don't register the some of the products or the some of the purchases. You register like, okay, this is fifty dollars here. But then when you add it all up at the end of the month, you're like seven, eight hundred dollars. Like, so no, that's not gonna be that's not that's not it for me. And you know, like I do have new financial goals. Like, you know, with everything going up and prices being what they are now, you know, I have started thinking about like, okay, well, girl, maybe it's time you get a house because what you're paying in rent could be a mortgage somewhere else. So like those are the decisions that I have been grappling with as a human, as an adult. So, you know, really improving my financial discipline, coming up with a budget, figuring out, you know, where I have been overspending and how I can cut back in a realistic way that doesn't significantly impact my lifestyle, but allows me to do all the things that I want to do. So cutting back where I need to, um, and then being able to save more. Like I really genuinely just want to save more. So. I'm gonna do a separate video talking about my low buy for the year because I think I've decided I'm going to do a low buy because they're just things that I don't need to purchase, like <laughs> at all, period. So I'm gonna do a, a separate, maybe chat to get ready with me talking about that. So that's it when it comes to financial discipline and whatnot. So like you, so like you see, 
that is not a smart goal. I need to actually break that down into a series of smaller goals so that I can better articulate what it is I'm trying to accomplish. Like, you know, have a budget, stick to it, make sure I'm saving X amount of dollars per month, you know, like that type of stuff. Okay. So I know this is getting long, so I'm gonna try to like speed up the rest. Uh, the next uh, personal goal that I have is I want to only have one outside meal per week. So <laughs> like I said in the last one, part of like not really paying attention to finances is that I actually found myself ordering out more and ordering in more. So like when I was working in an office, one thing that I did religiously constantly was that I meal prepped for the week. Like that was it. I always made sure that I had lunch and some snacks and maybe I would eat out once a week with like co-workers, we would go out to lunch and that was it. But I was very, very di di diligent about what, um, about how much I spent um, when I was back in my corporate office days and making sure that I cooked. And I, the reason why this is a goal is for two reasons. One, it's expensive to order food constantly, like ridiculously expensive, especially if you're ordering lunch and dinner. It, Spending over $100 or $100 a day, no, no ma'am. Four or five days a week, absolutely not. So I don't want to deny myself, you know, like being able to order in food every now and then, but it needs to be cooked significantly because I'm doing too much. So one, one outside meal a week and I'm not, and I'm gonna try to make sure that if I am going out for like brunch or lunch or whatever it is with friends, that that is that meal. So that's already, I can't order in during the week if I know that Saturday and Sunday I'm going out to brunch or whatever with my friends. So that's how I'm trying to like make sure that I am not spending too much money on like food, outside food, but also eating better. Cause the reality is I live in America. The food here is not exactly the bestest. So if, or if I want to eat healthy and have a healthier diet, that comes from me, cr cr uh, you know, cooking my own foods. So that, that's the goal there. Um, Speaking of healthier diet, um, <laughs> the other thing that's on my list is I want to go to the gym three times a week. Again, back in my corporate girly days, I used to go to the gym four or five days a week, constantly. You know, a lot of that changed when, uh, as I progressed in my career, I started traveling more and doing more conferences and meetings and whatnot. And it became really, really hard to have a consistent gym schedule when you were flying weekly, bi-weekly, whatever the case is. So I, you know, I really, really fell off from having a very consistent routine and I'm somebody that thrives off of routine. So I really want to get back to having a routine where I am going to the gym three times a week. And I'm saying specifically going to the gym because I understand that you can work out from home, but I would like to go to the gym. I pay a gym membership, a monthly gym membership that I have not been using and I don't like wasting money going back to that first goal I am not somebody that enjoys wasting money so I would write I would like to use my gym membership I also like taking classes I like the camaraderie of it I like the idea of not having to think about my workouts because I know that I'm gonna go there and the instructor is gonna tell me what I need to do and I don't gotta think about it you know I spend a lot of time at work thinking making decisions and any way in which I can lessen the mental load in other aspects of my life, I'm going to do that. Which is why I did things like food boxes, like HelloFresh and whatnot, because I don't have to think about what I'm gonna cook. This plate, this you know box tells me this is the meal, I'm gonna cook this meal. So like, I like going to the gym and taking like classes, lift whether it be lifting classes or whatever, boxing classes, because I don't have to think. I just go in, I follow the instructions, and I go home. So, gym three times a week. Um, okay, this one, <laughs> I may be backtracking on it, but let me know. So I also wrote down that I would like to consume alcohol once a week or only in social settings. <laughs> and that is because I am the type of gal who will finish work and sit down and have a glass of wine. Now, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong or inherently bad with that. I think we all deserve a nice little glass of wine from time to time, but I do recognize you know, the effects of alcohol on the body, the older I get, the longer it takes for your body to start processing some of these things. And if, you know, like one of my goals is to overall lose weight, um, weight loss <laughs> is like primarily tied to like diet, 
yeah, exercise matters too, but you can fix a lot of things when it comes to your weight by just adjusting your diet. And alcohol is in no way going to help benefit me if I'm gonna, if I, if I want to lose weight. That's just not a thing. To that, my weight loss goal is I'm trying to lose at least 20 pounds by the end of the year, which is, I think, completely doable, but it's gonna take a revamp in my diet and my exercise. And yes, a glass of wine isn't gonna kill me, but also like, if I'm going out for brunch or whatever on Saturday or Sunday or dinner with a friend, I don't need to have wine during the week because I'm gonna have a glass of wine then. So really, really trying to cut back on what I consume in terms of alcohol. And I don't typically do a lot of like cocktails or like super sweet fruity drinks. I'm a wine gal. So like after work, I'll have a glass of wine. If I go out for friend with friends, I will have a glass of wine, maybe a cocktail if it's not too sweet. Um, but it's typically a glass of wine. So that's, but again, alcohol is alcohol is alcohol. Let's not split hairs over here. So <laughs> that's it. Um, and then the last goal, because I want to wrap this up and finish the rest of my face, is I would like to do, my goal is to do one solo self-care activity a month. I, because I'm an extrovert, I get a lot of joy and energy from being around people and I don't know, I feel like there, other than when I'm at home, like at work or whatever it is, um, and again, I do live um, alone, I feel like I'm always surrounded by people and I tend to always find myself surrounded by people and I don't spend a lot of time by myself where I'm just with myself, enjoying myself. Um, and by that I mean when I'm like alone at home, a lot of times it's I'm editing, I'm cleaning, I'm doing some kind of activity that needs to get done for like life. But I don't just get to sit and relax and enjoy me. So I really want to incorporate more self, solo self-care activities because I'm also the type of person that will invite people to come with me everywhere. Like, hey, I'm gonna go to this museum, you wanna come? I'm gonna go to do this, you wanna come? So like, I'm happy to bring other people in, but I do think it's really important for me to have that one day where this is Jamila time by Jamila self. So for this month, I'm actually going to get a massage. It's my birthday month, so I'm really, really amping up the self-care this month. So at the end of the month, I'm gonna get a massage by myself and just enjoy it. And as the year progresses, I'm gonna find other things to do, whether it be going to a park, going to a coffee shop by myself, um, just going on a hike by myself, like all of those things, like finding one day and one activity that I can do by myself that does not incorporate anybody else, where I can just shut the world out and enjoy me. Cause I'm a nice person, I like me, I like me a lot. So that's it, okay. Those are my goals for 2024. Let me finish up the rest of my face and I'll come back and wrap up this video. Okay, I'm back. This is the final face. Let me bring you guys in so you can see the eyes. So definitely kind of smoky and grungy. Um, this is really cute. I mean, this is a solid neutral eyeshadow palette. Obviously it has that bridal design to it. And I like the way in which it's arranged. So you get a pinky roll, a sort of warm goldish roll, and then a cool toned roll. So you can go literally any which way you want when it comes to neutral looks. But yeah, and I love this Sydney Grace formula. You guys know how I feel about it. It's just one of those that just works. So <laughs> no complaints there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come back, quickly wrap up today's video. Oh, this is Tracy. In case you were wondering, of course I'm wearing Tracy. Who else? <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to wrap up today's video and thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, so these are my 2024 goals. Like I said, a couple of them do need some workshopping, but essentially this is where my mind's at. These are the things that I wanna prioritize going into this year. And I'm excited, you know, nervous, of course, a little bit because you just never know. Um, and life be life in sometimes, but I am excited and really looking forward to just getting it together and, and moving on to bigger and better things. Like I said, um, I feel like I got in the rut of, oh, well, you know, COVID and it's 2024. It's been four years, time to move on, time to like accept COVID for what it was and figure out what this next chapter phase of my life is um, and become the person that I wanna become, you know? 
it's never too late. It's never, ever, ever too late. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my goals. I would love if you would share some of yours down um, in the comments below. If you don't want to leave a comment, of course, leave your orange hearts. You know, I love seeing that just as much as everything else. And I, yeah, just thank you guys again so much for all of the love and support and everything that you've done this past year, <laughs> uh, past week, past month, um, when it comes to supporting my channel and supporting my growth. I appreciate each and every single one of you so much more than you know, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.